extremely hazardous driving conditions can be expected. High wind warning remains in effect. West winds 30 to 40 miles per hour with gusts up to 60 miles per hour expected. On this trail recon adventure, we set out to explore the backcountry of southern New Mexico. We are in search of some remote off-the-grid trails and secluded camping spots, and we anticipate it's going to be a bit cold, so we came prepared. But after some slow going on some difficult terrain, encountering some challenges that required rerouting, and some very unexpected weather conditions, we had to make some tough decisions. Yeah, we're letting them make the decision. They're gonna decide whether or not we're staying tonight. Yeah, uh, whether we, uh, what, what was it? Uh, Endure or escape? Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, join us as we take you along on our adventure in New Mexico. It's raining. Welcome to Trail Recon. I'm Brad. I'm Regina. And we just traveled two days to get here to New Mexico, where we just met up with our good friends, Matt and Kara and Goose. Yes, can't forget Goose. We're gonna spend the next couple days just exploring out here. We don't really have a big agenda. We just wanna head into the National Forest and just see where it takes us. And keep warm. And keep warm. <laughs> so here's the thing, it's winter. And we knew that mm -hmm. coming in here, and I think we prepared pretty well. Oh yeah, I packed absolutely everything I could think yeah. of. So we, we were gonna share with you some of the things we packed with us and brought with us to kind of keep warm, but here's the challenge. Mother Nature might be really stubborn. Uh, it might get pretty cold. So we have to decide, are we gonna use our gear and <laughs> endure it, or are we gonna escape and enjoy it a little bit? So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I wanna but have fun. We wanna have fun. We wanna be able to relax at camp and uh, have a good time, but and single digit weather and snow. Yeah, frostbite is not on my to-do list. So we'll see how it goes, guys, but uh, we're gonna have a great adventure regardless, so this should be fun. New Mexico is a state I have passed through many times over the years, and I've hit a few random trails here and there and camped in some great spots just up north but I've always wanted to spend some quality time exploring the state. So we have been planning a trip for a couple months with the intention to do just that, explore and see where the trails take us. We begin this adventure in an area of public land about 20 miles west of the town of Carlsbad, New Mexico. And we'll be working our way northwest from here towards the Lincoln National Forest and if the weather behaves, much further north. Both Matt and I have some trail routes in mind, but not knowing how many miles we'll be able to put down each day, and both wanting to leave our options open to venture down other trails just to see where they go, we have no expectations for where we might end up each day. Regina will be doing a lot of the driving these first couple days, and I have to tell you, her ability to navigate this Jeep on the trails has been impressive as of late. She's had a lot of time behind the wheel this last year, and honestly, she doesn't give herself enough credit. But she can wheel with the best of them, and to do it with a trailer in tow is not as easy as many folks think. She's got some good skills with it. As we ventured deeper into the backcountry, we find ourselves at about 4,000 feet of elevation with some rolling hills, some jagged cliff walls off in the distance, lots of low growth shrubs, most of which will want to kill you with their thorns. There are plenty of cattle roaming freely and some of them watched us pretty intently as we drove by and others like this herd wanted to take the lead and show us the way. During this first two days of the trip, I'll bet we passed through at least two dozen dry creek beds of loose rocks like this one. I imagine in the spring or after a really hard rain, the water is rushing through here at a pretty good pace. And some of these creek beds looked as though they might get pretty deep. Something to keep in mind depending on what time of year you might be out here. Water in some of these might get a little high. Now we encountered an area of the trail that looked to have been recently washed out by the rain and had some really deep ruts. Matt's gladiator was the first to take a stab at this and there was a bit of slipping and sliding, but after repositioning and getting a better approach at it, he made it through no problem with those big old 38s. Yeah, you got it, I think that's the line. I helped spot Regina through this because with the trailer, it might get a little bit more challenging. 
she didn't even flinch. Although I'm not super happy about the front tire lifting, it might be time to start thinking about a suspension upgrade that I've been putting off so I can get a little bit more down travel with the Jeep's tires and keep all four on the ground. Nice. Look at you, girl. That was pretty good. How was it? Well, I was fine with you telling me which way to go. You didn't have lockers on either. No, was huh. I supposed to? No, you did great. <laughs> All right, we just came up to a gate, which is pretty typical when you're crossing through BLM and private property. However, this one appears to be locked. So, let's see what happens here. Matt, what's it, uh, what's it say? I'm showing BLM ahead, what are you seeing? Well, it, it, the way the road goes, it crisscrosses in and out of private land. Yeah. But it does connect just around that ridge over there to more BLM land and then cuts back through private and then through yeah. BLM. I have to say this is the most fragmented trail I think I've ever been on. It's got BLM and forest yeah. and private. And state and land. Everything. Yeah, there's state land trust here. Yeah, so this should be accessible. Yeah, um, I'm surprised it's not. Coming across a gate on a trail is not uncommon. We would actually encounter several on our journey here, but a lock gate on public lands can be a challenge if not expected. We had to backtrack several miles to connect with another trail that would hopefully take us in the direction we wanted to go. Good thing we both have extra fuel because with the slow going on these bumpy trails and having to reroute more than once, we are burning fuel at a higher rate than we expected. Thankfully, we are both carrying extra. All right, everyone, we are 28 miles into southern New Mexico. We're on a pretty rocky section of trail that's it's, slow going. It's like driving down a cobblestone road. Yeah. It's all twisty and turny and jolty, and but it's beautiful. I love all the different rock shapes. Yeah, it's definitely beautiful out here. Uh, we are still on, we're actually right now, we're on a section of private property. We should be entering the national forest here soon. So we'll be interested to see how the terrain changes, but and it's vast out here. We've seen one other Jeeper out here, stopped and talked to them, they're locals, so they gave us a little insight. But uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna keep putting down the miles and hopefully find a spot for lunch. Yes. And then uh, start looking for a campsite here, uh, I don't know, in a couple hours. We got, some, we got some miles to go. Lunch, still. lunch first. Lunch it's first. Well past lunchtime, your wife is very hungry. You have not fed me and I'm going to be angry very soon. We're gonna eat too. Man. Okay, good, you better. Just a bit further down the trail, we stop to stretch our legs and investigate what we imagine is a beautiful little waterfall when the creek is flowing. We didn't make this our lunch stop, just grabbed a quick snack because we really want to try to make it to as close to the Lincoln National Forest as possible. I am enjoying this terrain, but when I was researching the trails out here, I really expected to be on more open fire roads and having the ability to lay down more miles than we are. I'm not upset about it at all, this is a blast, but I'm starting to have a little range anxiety with our fuel situation. There is a small town not too far off, but we can't confirm if they have fuel or not. I guess we'll find out.
that we were possibly coming in on. I think there's a I think it's trail right at the water tower back there, Matt. Well, okay, so that trailhead when we encountered that last gate yeah. um, that we just drove right through, yeah. it split off there mm. and that's where that connected to this. So if, if we'd gone that way, we still would have come right here. Right. After a lot of slow going, we finally decided it was time to put some food in our bellies. Even though we weren't nearly as far along as we had hoped, we got to eat. But Matt had an interesting concoction going on. Matt, am I seeing Cheetos on top of chicken salad? Yes. That, that's it's, very unique, my friend. It's, it's like delicious, it. and uh, I don't get my fingers all, all right. orange from okay. the Cheetos. So yeah, it's great. All right, impressions of the trail? Well, we're not near as far as I thought we would. Yeah, it's definitely slow going. <laughs> the 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 national forest is is right right over there, which which is where we're going. Yeah. So um, I'm pumped to get into that area, but I mean, this has been I, I've loved it. Yeah, it's beautiful, dude. I, I'm it's, excited it's to see what's been different, to... and I, I haven't minded the slow going because it's it's been nice. Yeah, I'm excited to see what's to come. Me too. No Cheetos for my lunch. Regina had something quick, easy, and pretty healthy to eat. This was a nice break we all needed, and we couldn't ask for a better view. We shouldn't have too much further to go before we hit pavement for a few miles. Well, assuming there's no more locked gates in our future. Once we get into the National Forest, we'll be exploring for just an hour or two before we have to get serious about looking for a nice place to camp for the night. Fingers crossed. Once we were a couple miles into the National Forest, the scenery had changed quite a bit from where we had started earlier in the day. The trees were a little taller, the plant life was a little denser, but the trail, well, still rocky and bumpy and slow going. Although there were a handful of obstacles that kept things pretty interesting. Our spirits were high, we were all enjoying the adventure. But the sun was beginning to drop and it was time to really get serious to look for camp before it gets dark.
Well, it took a while, everybody, but we finally found a campsite. They are a little sparse out here, but with this one, this one's really nice. And a good flat spot. Got all this protection from these massive rock wall cliffs. I mean, just look, look all the way around here. It's beautiful. Sun's going down, the clouds in the distance, kind of like golden sunset coming off the top of those mountains. I'm pretty happy with this spot. This is a, this is a beautiful area. Just a nice contrast to where we were at this morning. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna get set up, enjoy the evening. And surprisingly, it's not very cold out. What a great find in this camp spot. One Matt and I were sure to mark as a waypoint in the future. If you're like me, anytime I see a possible campsite, I mark it on my navigation system because you never know when you might be back to an area and need a place to stay for the night. This is one that I will be keeping for future use. This site was just how I envisioned camping in southern New Mexico would be. Such a great spot. Matt and Kara and Regina and I have become pretty proficient over the years at setting up and breaking down camp. So we were all set up, relaxing just as the sun went down. All right, everybody. Well, we have set up camp. The sun has set. We've got the Ignic That's fire pit going. Like Matt's over here looking at navigation, cool. scouting out our route tomorrow. Kara and Goose are chilling on the uh, lounge. And Regina's over there making salad for dinner. We're going to have something healthy tonight, which is going to be good for all of us. I absolutely love Greek salad. And what a refreshing dinner to have after a long day on the trail. I'm pretty sure I had thirds, but that's okay, right? Because it's salad. Salad! Uh, that worked pretty good. It did work pretty good. Huh, camping trip. What an amazing end to the day. We can't wait to see what's in store for us tomorrow. I like New Mexico. This is a great place. Uh, so much to see out here, and I am excited to see where we continue to explore. It's a little chilly this morning, and I mentioned at the beginning of this video that we were gonna encounter some weather, and this morning, it was only 37 degrees. We're expecting it to get much, much colder. So what I wanna do is talk a little bit about kind of how we're staying warm on this trip, at least preparing to stay warm. There's potentially some teens and even some single digit uh, temperatures if we keep heading further north. And that was originally the plan, but I think what we kind of decided is we're gonna stay a little bit further south and stay where it's a little warmer, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. We're gonna venture out today uh, and see what the temperature and the weather looks like. Now, to stay warm, uh, first of all, your clothing is essential. You know, people have told me over the years, uh, look, you're, you're not cold, you just have the wrong clothes. And that's so profound. You need to make sure you have the right clothes. So having layers of clothes, having some, you know, good uh, long johns. I have a couple jackets with me. I always have a beanie and gloves. And for Christmas, Regina got me this vest. And this is not something I probably would have bought for myself, but I gotta tell you, I really like this vest. It's a heated vest. So there's a little battery pack in here and you turn it on and it heats it up. And it's still chilly right now. And this is the only thing in this flannel that I have on and I am very warm. So <laughs> it's a little Gucci, but I kind of like this. Uh, Regina's got all kinds of warm gear. She had blankets on and thick jackets last night and she was plenty warm. We have that Ignic fire pit, which is nice because uh, in a place like this where there's a lot of dry grass everywhere, we wouldn't want to have a full on campfire. So having a portable propane fire like that is nice in the evenings. Uh, one, just for ambient lighting, but two, to kind of keep warm. Now, 
Matt and Kara were in their rooftop tent last night and they have a diesel heater that they're using. So they've got this really nice little portable diesel heater. I actually really like it. So it's like one little single unit uh, and just plugs right into a 12 volt. It's got like a one gallon diesel tank in there and then they just run a hose right up into their uh, rooftop tent. So they were very warm up there. Our trailer has uh, a diesel heater. Uh, it's mostly for heating the water. It does a great job at doing that, a really good job. But it also has a small blower fan that will blow hot air over the coils that are used to heat the water into the tent. The tent is so big though, it just, it just barely takes the edge off. It doesn't really heat it in there. And so for a trip like this, normally I don't bring it. We brought the portable Covea butane heater and that does a really good job of heating the inside of that tent especially when Regina is getting ready for bed I get in the morning you know I'll get in there turn it on and then hop back in the blankets until it warms up a little bit it's a nice little uh, piece of gear it's really small and compact and it puts out a good amount of heat and one of those butane tanks on full blast will last about about four to six hours uh, we're kind of regulating it a little bit and we'll see over this trip about how long we actually get out of but I brought several of those uh, just because I knew we would need it normally I wouldn't bring something like that some of the other things that are super important are your sleeping gear our bed we have what's called a bedsy, and this is something that Regina found, and it's like this all-in-one blanket sheet. It all fits over the mattress in there, and then it has zippers on the side like you would have with a sleeping bag. It's very warm. It's good and thick, uh, and when we get home, you just take that entire thing and you just throw it in the washing machine and wash it. And then we have our Vector Off-Road Down Blanket, and we put that on top on cold nights like this, and I'll tell you what, it's almost too warm. Sometimes I will sleep with our long johns on. Uh, last night really didn't need it. It was really warm in there, so there's just some things that we do to keep warm, and uh, we'll see how much colder we're gonna get. All right, Regina's back there making some breakfast. I'm back here. Let's go see what she's cooking. Good morning, hon. Good morning. How'd you sleep? Yeah, were you warm? I was. Yeah. As long as I stayed had it under our covers. Yeah. What's uh, what's for breakfast? You've been working pretty hard over here for the last few minutes. Um, I am making a blueberry buttermilk breakfast cake. Okay. And um, it requires softened butter, so I kept it <laughs> inside with us last night, and uh, <laughs> it mostly got it to where it needed to be. Okay. And. Uh, I also need to beat things with my mixer, which I can plug in, which is amazing. Yeah, that's the first time I've ever seen you bring a mixer camping, so it's pretty no, cool. No, I brought it once before. Oh, really? Yeah, well, yeah, I made this when we went up to Thomas Mountain. Well, that shows you how observant I am. Uh-huh. Well, I can't wait. Alrighty, don't let me lose count. Here's something interesting that was kind of unexpected. So last night we were cooking and we could not get the flame to go to heat some water for some hot chocolate. I thought there was a problem with the stove. And I thought, no, maybe there's a problem with the regulator on the propane tank. And Matt was like, hey, why don't we just swap hoses and check it out? And so I don't know what the deal is. This hose I think is clogged, but thankfully Matt had an extra hose so Regina could make a great breakfast this morning. Can we see how that looks? Uh-huh, I think it's just about done. Oh, come on. That smells incredible. So, you know, you never know what kind of spare parts you need to bring with you. I would have never expected a hose, but <laughs> thanks, Matt. Add it, to, add it to the list. I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna bring a spare hose, but at least we knew what the problem was. Nice. Yeah, it's so good. Oh. How'd you like it? Uh-huh. That's good. The goose get crumbs? I think so. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, That's so good. <laughs> yeah. Kara, you were in the tent last night. 
<laughs> yes, she was. How was the temperature up in there? It was a sauna. It was amazing. That's uh, so not fair. I but... dreamed of the beach and the waves <laughs> and everything. It was glorious. All right. Well, we'll see if that still continues over the next couple days. <laughs> yes, I, I am not talking to you today. <laughs> Just walking around our campsite, doing a little exploring. And I think, I think we can get up into that cave. Let's go see what we can get into. A few loose rocks, not terribly sketchy. What do we got in here? That's kind of cool. Good little cave if you're an animal. See somebody's camped up here. At least had a campfire. Probably kept them pretty warm in this little cave. It goes pretty far back there. I don't feel like getting on my hands and knees today, but it's kind of cool. Nice little cave. This place is beautiful, and we stopped and explored many hidden gems along the way, like this little watering hole that's probably much deeper in the spring. There was evidence that many of the animals here use this to grab a quick drink. It's important to not be in a hurry and soak in the little finds like this. Yes, pun intended.
We've been on the trail for, I don't know, a couple hours. It was a fun technical trail coming up there. Hit the road a few miles, came into the town of Queens where there was supposed to be a fuel stop. At least that's what we had marked, but there hasn't been a gas station here in several years is what the folks here have been telling us. So we've stopped at this little cafe. We're gonna go in and have some lunch, take a break, and then uh, keep on trekking. The Queen's store and cafe is a quiet, rustic, and very friendly spot. The service was exceptional and the food hit the spot. They did let us know that there is a Christian camp just down the road that has fuel if you need it in an emergency, but we weren't in an emergency. The nearest gas station is all the way back into Carlsbad. Fuel is pretty sparse out in this area. That figures. All right, lunch was great. And if you're in Queens, it's worth the stop. Support these guys. It's a great little uh, little cafe. Now, we're airing up because uh, we need to head all the way back to Car Carlsbad, which is like 45 miles. There is no fuel around here anywhere. And while I still have some extra fuel, Matt and I are both at a half a tank. And if we keep going deeper into the Lincoln National Forest, well, things are gonna, we're gonna be on fumes. So we're gonna go fill up, grab a couple extra supplies, and then we're going to head deep into Lincoln, and hopefully the weather stays just like this. Come on. Oh, you're okay. Get in there. There it goes. This is quite possibly the longest out of the way I've ever gone for gas on a trip, but we really didn't have a choice. Initially, we had planned on being much further north, which would put us closer to some other small towns that did have fuel. But at this rate, there's just no way we're gonna make it. I did pick up a new propane hose while in town, and after a very long detour, we made our way back towards the forest. But now things were not looking so great with the weather forecast. Temperatures are gonna be much colder than anticipated and rain and snow were now going to play a factor. Okay, so things have gotten interesting. You can tell it's raining and there is 20 to 25 mile an hour winds behind me right now and it's about 40 degrees. It is really cold out here. We just went down this trail to find a camp spot. We found three spots. None of them had any protection from the wind. So Matt and I just sat down and looked at some potential spots just near Queens. They ran ahead to go look at a spot. We're gonna run ahead and look at a spot. Hopefully we can find something that's in the shelter that'll get us out of this wind. If not, well, I mean, we're gonna be running around aimlessly in the dark and I don't think any of us wanna do that. So we're gonna go check out this spot first. Additional details, white snow is possible this evening through early Tuesday morning. Blowing snow and reduced visibilities are possible. Extremely hazardous driving conditions can be expected, especially for motorists in high-profile vehicles who should consider delaying travel. High wind warning remains in effect until 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time Tuesday. What? West wind 30 to 40 miles per hour with gusts up to 60 miles per hour expected. All right, Matt, uh, I don't recall a blizzard being in the forecast when we were checking this out. Do you? I don't either. No. Uh, so the girls are in the gladiator over there. Yeah, we're letting them make the decision. They're going to decide whether or not we're staying tonight. Yeah. Uh, but, whether we, uh, what, what was it, uh, endure or escape? Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, yeah, these are some big snowflakes coming down. This is, this yeah. is nasty. Guys, I have uh, camped in some nasty stuff. This could possibly top it if we decide to stay here. Endure or escape? That's how I started this video. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put money that we're gonna escape. We might be escaping. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. This it just keeps getting worse. It doesn't, it doesn't get any better. <laughs> so the snow is now starting to stick, as you can see there. And if you take a look at the bottom of my shoes, all the mud is accumulating on the bottom of my shoes as well. So the girls have oh been talking, God. and we're gonna hear the verdict. What's the plan, ladies? Well, we've just had decided that we don't think y'all can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and poor little goose. I mean, I as mean, thick as 
that mud is, his, yeah. his little legs would get stuck. He would, he would stink. He would just sink in it. Yeah. So oh. for your sakes. And uh -huh. goose. Oh, and goose. Okay. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> well, it was an adventure getting here. It was. Well, it's going to be an adventure leaving. <laughs> 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 an adventure getting back to Carl's Bend, too. Very true. Because it's starting to stick. This is pretty. This it's is a really good spot. It, it'll be a beautiful drive home. And this is a great camp spot. Maybe so. we can camp here tomorrow night. All right. Yeah. So, guys, we've decided. We're escaping. We're escaping for tonight. <laughs> and for the record, we didn't think we were going to escape on Monday night. No, no, no. We were not thinking at all. like Wednesday yeah, night. Wednesday we were worried Wednesday about. Wednesday was what we were worried about. <laughs>